Welcome back to another SCP reading, dear researchers. Today we're going to be reading SCP-352, Baba Yaga. Now without further ado. Item number SCP-352, Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. Containment area is to remain sealed at all times. No human interaction is to be allowed with SCP-352. Any and all interaction should be carried out via robot or other remote means. Should human interaction become necessary, full hazmat containment protocols should be observed. In addition, security lines must be attached to all personnel. Should any personnel begin to exhibit erratic behavior, they are to be immediately removed from the containment area via the security lines. Any staff reporting hallucinations after interaction with SCP-352 or her hair are to immediately be placed under quarantine. Any staff working in or around the containment area must submit to random psychological or physical testing. Anyone found to be contaminated will be placed into immediate quarantine. Staff attacked by SCP-352 may only be recovered if they have not been bitten by SCP-352. SCP-352 is to be fed only once weekly. Feeding will be discontinued for one month if SCP-352 attacks any personnel. Description. SCP-352 appears to be a very old emaciated woman of indeterminate age and race. SCP-352 speaks Old Russian, but with an accent and dialect that makes translation very difficult. SCP-352 is extremely unwilling to communicate, with most of the conversations thus far made primarily of threats or statements of revenge. SCP-352 has never identified herself by any name, and due to her aggressive nature, it has been impossible to determine any background information. SCP-352 possesses a level of strength and speed much higher than what should be possible for a person of her perceived age and physical dimensions, and has been shown moving loads in excess of 200 kilograms with little physical strain, and moving at speeds in excess of 70 kilometers per hour. SCP-352 can recover from wounds that would be lethal to a human being, including decapitation and disemboweling. This regeneration can take between several days to several weeks, depending on severity. Internally, SCP-352 appears to be a normal human woman, with muscles, bone, and organ in a state consistent with advanced age. Testing done on tissue samples has been inconclusive. SCP-352 is capable of growing very thin hair-like strands from any part of her body, apparently at will. These strands can grow several meters in an hour and appear to be at least partially under the control of SCP-352. They have been observed crawling along floors and up walls and other structures. These hairs are clear and nearly invisible to the naked eye, and appear to be slightly weaker than standard human hair. These strands are also coated in a thin layer of chemical enzyme identical to the enzyme in the saliva of SCP-352. SCP-352 produces an enzyme that is most concentrated in the saliva and hair, but is present in all bodily tissues of SCP-352. How it is produced and its exact chemical makeup are unknown. This enzyme reacts on contact with human tissue and rapidly attacks the nervous system. Symptoms manifest almost immediately and include hallucinations, euphoria, suppression of cognitive or logical thinking, and suppression of pain receptors. This state persists for several days with mild exposure and can become permanent with high exposures. Bites from SCP-352 lead to high exposure in 99.9% .9 of cases. SCP-352 appears to subsist on a carnivorous diet, with a strong preference for human flesh. SCP-352 will create a web of hair and wait for prey to become exposed to the enzyme and become more docile. SCP-352 will often remove and eat the limbs of a prey item to prevent it from wandering away and can take several days to fully devour prey. Humans have been observed to be in a euphoric state, and have no knowledge of the outside world even as they suffer the loss of limbs and other bodily tissue. Addendums Note on Recovery 
SCP-352 was recovered in southern Russia, near the town of Redacted. Reports of an enchanted forest and a witch who had caused several deaths were initially ignored, until reports of the witch being found and captured began to surface. When Foundation agents responded, the town was found deserted. Several bodies were found in varying states of decomposition, and blood trails appeared to show many more bodies being dragged into the enchanted forest. Recovery teams were dispatched and captured SCP-352, but suffered heavy casualties due to SCP-352's attack and exposure to the enzyme. A large amount of hair was recovered as well, and is believed to be the cause of many exposure incidents, with contact being attributed to spider webs or an agent's own hair, and not reported until hallucinations manifested. Addendum Notes on Behavior While SCP-352 prefers any type of human flesh over any other type of meat, it appears to have a special propensity for children between 0 and 2 years of age. After observation of highly elevated levels of cooperation and a reduced tendency to attack staff while consuming flesh of this type, a possible alteration in its current diet is being considered. Addendum. The use of SCP-604 and SCP-1680 as a more efficient food source for SCP-352 is currently pending approval from the project director following initial testing. I most certainly don't want to come into contact with this. It may not prefer my flesh, but it still eats flesh, and that's... yeah, not really my cup of tea. But thank you very much for coming, dear researchers. It has been an honor reading for you. Good luck out there, and I hope to see you all next time.